Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and today we're taking a quick look at the Duo Windows on ARM project. This is a third party effort led by Gustav Montz and the community which attempts to bring the full version of Windows, that being Windows 11 here, over to the Surface Duo. Of course Surface Duo by default runs Android so getting Windows to run on here is quite the achievement and they've done a pretty good job. So I've been running this for the last few days, how does it perform? Surprisingly well, believe it or not. For a device that's four years old running a, a processor that's, I think, five years old now, this is the Snapdragon 855, which was never officially sort of certified to run Windows in the first place, it runs really quite well. So if we have, open up a couple apps here, you'll see what I mean. If we open up um, settings on one side and uh, Notepad on the other, for some reason, Notepad slided over there, but there you go. You can see we're running two apps side by side. Both screens are working as you would expect, as is touch. We can say, hey, there and it will actually work as you expect. We've also got things like gestures, so the taskbar minimizes just like it would on a normal Windows tablet. We can swipe up to open the start menu, like so on this side, and then we can swipe up on the other side to do the same. Now, any <laughs> glitches you're seeing here in regards to the animations, that's all Windows. That's nothing really to do with the hardware itself. That's just Windows not being optimized for dual screen. Uh, and that's because Windows 11, unlike Windows 10X, is not really optimized for this sort of layout. Um, so you can't do things like dragging an app window between the two displays. It just doesn't really work properly. You can do it, but it's a bit of a pain. Uh, you can see if we just do it sort of halfway like so, and then drag it to the other side like that, that works, but you can't just use one gesture to swipe over across because the touch digitizer stops working in the middle and there was some magic on Windows 10X and indeed on Android to allow that gesture to work, which isn't currently working here on the full version of Windows 11. Perhaps that's something the Duo Windows and ARM team can add um, down the line, but for now, you just also have to manually move them across like so. So if we go into settings here, you'll see that you can, once this is installed, you can sort of update it like normal. Um, you can see I've got an update pending here, which I'm not going to install at this very moment. And um, yeah, it is Windows on ARM, so any x86 apps you download will run in an emulated layer, which do run quite a bit slower than native apps. But if you're running native apps here, such as say Unigram, for example, it runs really quite well. You can see here that we've got um, the Unigram app running. And you know, if you've ever used Unigram on a Windows phone, this basically looks like that. Again, we can type into here, say test and press send on that and it will send the message. It works pretty nicely. We can also go down back into our start menu and we can go down to say some of our web apps. I've got YouTube here, which I installed earlier through Microsoft Edge. And for some reason it keeps shifting over to the other side. Let's do that like so. And we can say, let's look for Windows Central. There we are. And yeah, we can start playing a video like you would expect. Now, unfortunately, not everything is working on here just yet. There are a couple of driver issues still or, or things they've not figured out fully. Things like sound aren't working properly right now. So there is support for receiving SMS messages. We go into the apps uh, menu here. There is a chat app. This is built by the uh, Windows on ARM Duo team, um, but you cannot send SMS messages to my knowledge. You can receive them, although I guess I'll try test. See what comes back like so. Yeah, no, you can't send them, but you can definitely receive them. This was sent from another phone and it arrived just like you would expect. You can even see your cellular network up here. There is a button to make a phone call, but it doesn't currently work. Clicking on it doesn't do anything. There's no support within Windows desktop to make phone calls via cellular, to my knowledge. Maybe they'll be able to work that out in the future, but for now, you can't make or receive phone calls. Um, if we go back into the uh, apps list, there's actually quite a few apps that are bundled with the image. There's an app store here. What does this do? I don't know, but there it is. Seemingly nothing. All right, this goes to what's next. As I mentioned, there is a dialer here, but again, it doesn't work because there's no support for making cellular phone calls. But hey, you can take a look at what it would look like to make a phone call running Windows 11 Have they, if they add support for it. If you scroll down a bit further, there is a Microsoft True Paint app don't really know what this does, but you can sort of do some pretend drawing like this and yeah, it sort of looks like an Andromeda app from like before they cancelled Andromeda. Not really sure what they were planning to do with this, but hey, there you are. We can close out like so or not. There we go. And then we can scroll down a bit further to see that we also have a built in um, 
Surface Settings app, once again, built by the Windows Alarm Duo team. And this gives you sort of the latest information on what image or, or version of Windows for the Duo you're running. You can see here we're running uh, 2401.90, um, as well as your storage available, device information, etc., etc., which is kind of cool. So those, that's a quick look at the Inbox apps. Um, all the other sort of Windows Inbox things work as you would expect. You can swipe over from the left here to open up your widgets panel if you want to take a look at Emerson News. You can press the Copilot button on the right here to open up Microsoft's AI Assistant, which works as you would expect. Let's use that as an example and see what Copilot has to say. If you've used Copilot before, this will not be new to you. It works just like you would expect with the same sort of performance as well, which is uh, pretty nice. Let's tap out of there. So the image does support postures, kind of. You can close the Surface Duo and it will lock like you would expect. Um, and then when you open it again, it'll be ready to be unlocked. The lock screen doesn't, doesn't support dual screen currently. That's a Windows limitation. So it will only appear on your primary display. You swipe up like so, and then it will just boot up with both screens once again. And there are some oddities with the sort of behavior of how apps open. As you just saw there, even though I opened the app on the left, it still appeared on the right screen because that's where it was last open. Windows remembers where you last had an app versus where you're currently initiating the app launch from, which again is a difference, is one of the differences between Windows 10X and the version of Android on here. Windows 11 doesn't understand that sort of behavior. And if we go in and open up, say, the task manager, we can see some of the performance. So we're currently using 84% uh, of our RAM and only 6% of our CPU, which to be fair, we're not doing much, but that's still pretty impressive. Let's say we open up Microsoft Edge here. So let's make sure that's full screen. Bring up the keyboard, Windows Central, like so. There we go. So we've got a couple of tabs open in Microsoft Edge now. Now our CPU is climbing, thanks Edge. But look, we're now running uh, Windows Central on Microsoft Edge on Surface Duo running a full desktop OS. And look, the performance, honestly, it's really not bad. Once it's got into its flow and stuff, it runs surprisingly well. You can see if we go into personalization, we have all of our usual personalization options, such as switching to dark mode, if that's something you want to do. Um, I'm gonna stick with light mode though, because it's easier for the video. Now, lastly, I wanna show you the Surface Pen. Uh, the Surface Pen does work on here. So you can go into your favorite note-taking apps of choice. For example, here we have, um, where is it? OneNote for Windows 10, which is the best of OneNote. And uh, we can just quickly jump in and add a page here. So here we are in the OneNote app. And as you can see, the Surface Pen does work like you would expect. Now, the um, accuracy of the pen on the screen isn't always 100%. You can see here on this side, it's quite a bit off. But on this side, it seems to be more or less perfect or near perfect anyway. It's certainly not perfect, but it's close. Um, and all the all the things that you would expect to be able to do with a Surface Pen do work here. So inking, um, erasing, and also the right click button here also works as you would expect, at least it's supposed to. Maybe it doesn't work in this app, but the right click button also is supposed to work. But yeah, that's pretty cool. And I think this also works in most sort of text boxes these days. Yep, you can ink into any text box you like. So you can also use this in single screen mode. It kind of works. You can do the whole flip around thing to show the other side as well. Um, this is quite actually useful for when typing because this makes typing a lot easier. So we can be like testing, except I can't type. There you go. Testing the keyboard. And uh, yeah, that works like so. The keyboard is a little bit small for this screen, but uh, it works in a pinch if it's something you need to use. And with that, that is a quick look at Windows 11 on the Surface Duo. It's a cool idea if you have a Surface Duo lying around, it's a great experiment to sort of get up and running to try out for yourself. Um, it works surprisingly well, as long as you stick to sort of native ARM apps. If you try to run anything emulated, it does slow down quite a bit, but that's just because this is running an older Snapdragon processor at this point, which wasn't very powerful to begin with. And so yeah, sticking with the native ARM stuff, I think will be your best bet if you are attempting to try this. Uh, but with that, thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.